Hey guys, here we are in lesson seven. And in lesson seven is the beginning of topic B. And we're looking at, once again, what is a fraction and comparing the effects of multiplying fractions by whole numbers and multiplying by a fraction less than one, equal to one, and greater than one. So let's get started. Um, on the screen, you can see I have a couple of problems for us. What is one half of two? Now, you probably already know that one half of two is one, right? If I have two and I ask you for one half, it's going to be one. But what equation shows that one half of two is one? Well, we've been talking about of is the same as multiplying. So one half times two equals one, right? Okay. How do you know that one half of two is one? We could think about a picture, right? We could think about one, two, and half of them would be one, right? Okay, very good. Now, what is one half of one? Hopefully you're thinking, well, one half of one is equal to one half because one half plus one half equals one whole, right? Okay, what equation shows us that? One half times one equals one half. Okay, that makes sense, right? How do you know that one half of one is one half? Similar to the last problem, if we have one whole, and then we break it in half to equal sections. Each part is one half. Okay, great. Now, we know that one half of two, we know one half of two, and we know one half of one. Have you ever thought of one half of one half? Hmm, one unit partitioned into two equal groups. Sorry, that's one half of one. I'm thinking about one half of one half. Would it be greater than or less than one half of one? And why? Okay, so think a little bit about one half of one half. Think about what that would be. Could you sketch a model of one half of one half? Uh, find a place to put some notes and draw a model of one half of one half. And we're going to talk more about that later because today we're finding the product of a fraction multiplied by a unit fraction. And remember that a unit fraction is any fraction that has a one on the top. So if you don't know that definition yet, you could still write that one down. A unit fraction, any fraction with a one in the numerator or on the top. Excellent. All right. Now, let's look at number one in your book. All right. Lesson seven, number one. And I have a slide for that right here. Let's see if I can make it bigger. No, that's okay. All right. Let's look at it. Well, first, let's read the problem. Mr. Evans plants flowers in two fifths of his garden. One third of the flowers are roses. What fraction of the garden is roses? So we have a whole area model here that shows the garden. There's something missing down here that I wish I could. There we go. We'll make it bigger. Okay. And so the area model shows the garden. And there we go. Two fifths of the garden is flowers and one third of the flowers are roses. So two fifths of the garden. Let's kind of do a little outline of two fifths of the garden, right? Two parts out of five. We see that there's one, two, three, four, five parts. So these are all flowers in the garden. In fact, we'll kind of color that in. 
These are all flowers, right? But one third of the flowers are roses. So let's use purple to color in the roses. One third of the flowers. So this is one third because we see three parts here. One, two, three. So one third is roses. So the question is, what fraction of the garden is roses, right? So the garden is the whole square and we see our two columns, which are two fifths. And then we see our one third of the flowers, our three equal parts, right? All right, so how could, which, what expression matches finding one third of two third of two fifths? One third and of is the same as multiplying one third of two fifths would be our expression for our roses being one third of the total flowers. Okay, very good. How many equal size parts are in the whole model? Let's see. We know we have five and three. So altogether we have 15 parts. And what fraction is shaded now? Two fifths, right? So we can say that two, sorry, two fifteenths, not fifths, two fifteenths of the garden is roses. And we can see it works with the multiplication sentence and as well with the model. <coughs> Sorry. What do you notice about the size of the product compared to the size of the factors? And how do you see that in the model? Okay. So remember that your factors are your two numbers that are being multiplied together and your product is your answer. So let's think about the sizes of those, right? We have two fifths, that's this whole section. And then we have one third, that would be this section. One third of the flowers, so that would be this section. And then this size of the answer is this section right here. Okay, so two fifteenths, actually this should be the whole one third. There we go. Sorry about that. So two fifteenths is smaller than one third and smaller than two fifths. Does it make sense that the product is less than two fifths? Yes, because we're talking about one third of the two fifths. All right. Very good. We will talk more about this in our next video. This was video one of lesson seven, module three. Thanks for watching and thanks for your hard work. Aloha.